Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your cycling tech related questions and problems. And you can submit your questions using the hashtag AskGCNTech in the comments section down below and on social media. So without further ado, this week's first question comes from Mare or Mark Cyclist, who says, rims and brake blocks. I go through them like they're made of soap. Some spots of rain and whoops, I've run out of braking material. Hashtag costing me a fortune. Well, brake wear is one of those things that's like a piece of string, right? Some people will break more and it depends on a variety of factors. Where you ride, the conditions you ride in, you know, the kind of roads that you're riding on, how clean they are, the time of year, how much, you know, the system weight on the bike is as well. Now, if you are going through a lot, there's a few things I'd recommend. Make sure everything is as clean as possible. So after your rides, make sure you're cleaning down your rims, rubbing dirt off them uh, with, a, with a cloth. And also on the brake blocks themselves, keep them clean. Because if there's any dirt or bits of, you know, well, particles stuck to them, then that can act like sort of sandpaper and be more abrasive on the rim surface and on the pad as well. Failing that, if you are going through a lot of rims, then the solution long term is probably a disc brake bike because it's much cheaper to repair, uh, well replace worn out discs and pads than it is to replace a whole wheel when your rim has worn out. Next question is from Camucho who says, what happens when a bottom bracket goes? Mine is making some pretty rubbish noises, will it stop me mid-ride? Usually it doesn't stop you mid-ride. Normally when a bottom bracket has gone, you, you can ride home on it. And it's usually something that comes on over a period of time. To know if your bottom bracket has gone, it's, it's gonna be because there's lots of play in the bearings. It's usually something that's not just down to noise. So if you can move your crank arm, again, you know, slide it side to side and there is actually a bit of play, that's a sign that it's gone. This is something that you should get fixed and replaced. It means that you probably need to get new bearings. The reason being that if there's play in there, it will cause the chain set to move slightly, which can mean you can drop your chain while you're riding along. You don't wanna do that, especially when you're out the saddle. It can be dangerous, you could fall off. And also your gear changes are likely to be compromised as well. But if it's just making noises, it might just need taking apart, cleaning and servicing, re-greasing and putting back together. You know, we, we talk about it a lot, but press fit bottom brackets are notorious for making creaks and noises. So it's something that is worth looking at. Also check that it is the bottom bracket that's making the noises. This sounds obvious, right? But in my experience and you know, all the other guys, we, we've often had bikes where we've sworn that it was the bottom bracket making the noise only to find out that it's the headset or the crank arm or just another part of your bike that you hadn't thought of. It could even be a pedal axle. So definitely diagnose the problem and check that it is the bottom bracket. Another bottom bracket question. This one from Bruce Langsteiner. He says, I have a classic steel frame that I would like to upgrade the bottom bracket and crank set to uh, Shimano Holotech. The threading in my frame is Italian. Is this a possibility? Yes, it is a possibility. Um, it certainly is. Now, the issue is that if you've got an old steel frame, um, then it's likely that the bottom bracket is threading in into the actual frame. It's not separate cups that are going in to that frame like you would on a carbon frame. And so the threading in the bottom bracket with it being Italian, that's that's important here. So a BSA bottom bracket that's threaded has opposite threads on each side of the bottom bracket. This is to stop you uh, unscrewing the left hand side of the bottom bracket as you pedal along in the same way that pedals have opposite threads on the left and right pedal. Now Italian bottom brackets, older design, they have the same clockwise thread on both sides of the bottom bracket, just an older, older design. But that means you can't put in a different bottom bracket into that thread um, if, if, if you were gonna try and do that. But don't worry, you can use an Italian bottom bracket that is designed to fit a Holotech Shimano crank set. I know this because my Pinarello came with one. Most modern Pinarellos actually come with Italian bottom brackets these days. I'm not entirely sure why, but I actually swapped mine out for uh, a GXP Italian threaded bottom bracket so that I could put my quark in and I took out my standard Shimano Holotech uh, chain set. So there you go. Next question is from Kevin's Wedlow, who says, how about tips for bike storage in a small apartment that also facilitates easy in-out 
for commuting. Well, this is a problem that a lot of people have to deal with. I deal with it myself, I live in a flat, and I actually store my bike on the wall above the fireplace. Now, I've actually drilled a mount into the wall that holds it in place. It looks really cool, especially, well, if you're into bikes, it looks cool, and you've got a nice bike. It's like a piece of art on the wall. Just make sure it's clean. But, check with your landlord if, you, if it's not your house or apartment before you start drilling holes in the wall. Um, definitely do that. But if you don't want to drill holes in the wall, there are loads of other options as well. So there's hooks that you can fit onto the backs of doors. Um, and so you can hang your bike on the back of a door. We have one of those in the GCN set that works really well. And Topeak make a, a, a touch go stand as well that is just like a pole that you can mount between the floor surface and the ceiling surface and then tension it in place by, by screwing it. And then you can just hang bikes on that, which is quite a neat solution as well if you don't want to start drilling holes in your flat. JRG106 underscore, unusual name, uh, has said, I struggle to wear cycling glasses when it's dark and raining. I get glare off the raindrops on the lenses. Any tips to prevent this? Well, m like most sort of high quality cycling glasses will have a good hydrophobic coating on the lens which should help shed rain but even so if you watch any pro race where it's raining like often in the, the classics or paris roubaix or something you'll see that a lot of the pros do away with the glasses put them on the back of the head or stow them in the helmet and that's because well glasses don't have windscreen wipers on them i guess so even with the hydrophobic coatings you will still get dirt and water sticking to them making it quite difficult to see Unfortunately, yeah, there isn't really a there isn't really a, an option beyond that. If it's really bad, I'd probably take your glasses off. That's what most pros do. But you could experiment with some hydrophobic coatings on your glasses. We recently did a video looking at hydrophobic coatings on the actual frame itself to try and make it dirt proof, but there's no reason why you couldn't apply something similar to your glasses. So maybe have a go at that. And the last question this week is from Eclipse Lex who says, great show, always enjoy watching and learning from it. Thanks, man. I find myself uh, a Pinarello 2004 Marvel frame. It has a semi-vertical dropout um, and an adjustment screw. Would it be possible to run it in a single speed without using a chain tensioner? Hmm. It's hard for me to say without seeing your semi-vertical uh, dropout because yeah, normally you need a horizontal dropout to, to run a bike at a single speed so that you can slide the rear wheel in and out in order to get the adequate chain tension because you don't have the rear derailleur there creating the chain tension. I actually answered a similar question about this in a tech clinic two episodes ago, but you can try it and see how you get on. You'll be It'll be pretty obvious if you can adjust the, the chain tension on there. It sounds like you might be able to, but if you can't and you don't want to run a chain tensioner to get that chain tension, then the same answer as before applies. The best option is probably to go with an eccentric hub um, as that will create the adequate train tension. So you need an eccentric hub in your rear wheel. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. As ever, keep your questions coming in and we'll keep on answering them using the hashtag AskGCNTech on social media and in the comments section below videos. And if you'd like to support the channel or get a GCN apron so that you can do your own maintenance and keep yourself clean, well, head over to the GCN shop. We've got loads.